What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Brian Noonan here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over how you find a world-class, really high quality supplier. Whether you're looking in China, in India, or even if you want to source a product and have it manufactured here in the United States. It's so important, you know, after picking the right product and doing product research, that you pick and choose the right FBA product. You know, finding a high quality supplier, a world-class supplier who has a high quality product that can brand your product, customize the product, improve the product, is probably the second most important part of starting your Amazon FBA business. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to go about finding the best suppliers uh, to work with. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Brian Noonan. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller and mentor. Right here on this channel, I release one to two new videos every single week covering everything Amazon FBA related, making money online. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment down below because I choose two lucky winners every single video to win 30 minute one-on-one -on -one mentorship giveaway calls. I choose two lucky winners who do those three things, subscribe, like the video, and leave me a comment and you could be entered to win one of those 30 minute calls with me. My job right here on this channel is to help educate, teach, and impact as many lives as possible. I went from a drug addict all the way to a full-time Amazon six-figure seller. Uh, and so I love helping people maybe who have struggled with drug addiction, overcome some other challenge or obstacle in your life, um, and be able to leave your nine to five job for good. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. Let's jump in today's video and go over how to find the best suppliers for your Amazon FBA private label business. Coming up. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm just trying to What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. All right guys, how are you gonna go about, once you've decided on your first or second or third FBA private label product, how are you then gonna go about finding a supplier? That would be step two. After you've decided on a product, you've done product research, you found a product, it looks good, you've read all the negative reviews to find out what are some of the issues with the product, what can you fix. Let's say, for example, you're going to be selling this coffee warmer for desk. Um, once you've done the research and found kind of the style or the color or the size of coffee warmer for your cup on a desk that works best, the next step is to go about looking for suppliers. Now, uh, Alibaba is the largest manufacturing, uh, global manufacturing website in the world. Most of the suppliers on Alibaba are going to be in China, but there's also suppliers in other countries like Central and South America, India, Pakistan, Vietnam, um, all over in Europe. So Alibaba is probably my number one go-to website for finding suppliers, but I will talk about in today's video some other resources, some other websites um, where you can go out and find suppliers. One of the most important things when it comes to time to buy your product, sourcing your product, contacting suppliers, it's finding a supplier who has a high quality product and who's willing to work with you. Um, sometimes in the beginning, we have to order a small test order. You know, there's no reason to order a thousand units for your first order. I usually recommend starting with, you know, 300 to 700 pieces um, or units for your first order. But let's talk about the process of sourcing your product. So you found a product. Now it's time to contact five to 10 suppliers um, on Alibaba or some of the other websites I'll talk about here in a minute. Now, uh, you can use the Alibaba template that is down below in the video description. That is a free download from me. You can just click on that, uh, copy and paste it uh, once you open it into a new Word doc or Google doc, and then edit it with your own information. So you wanna put your name and address at the top, and then uh, the questions down below about your product. And so basically this is an Alibaba template for contacting suppliers is down below in the video description and you want to edit that and be ready with that to send that off to five to ten suppliers because that's going to be the first step after you found a product or two or three and you want to start reaching out and looking for a high quality supplier supplier who can customize the product brand the product and differentiate the product really really well so the first thing i like to look for is a good quality um, supplier who has a good product a good price and a low MOQ. What is MOQ? MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. The reason I like to look for suppliers that have an MOQ of say 500 or less or a thousand or less 
is because for our first test order, we want to order a small amount. We don't want to have to order thousands and thousands of units like some suppliers require. So uh, we're looking for suppliers that also respond quickly and have good communication skills. How's their customer service? Once you send them the template, they will respond to you. When they responded to you, did they answer all the questions in red text or did they break up uh, their answers to match the questions in the order you asked them? That would signal that they have good communication skills. And that's gonna be so important when it comes time to start buying the product and sourcing the product, right? We wanna find a supplier who uh, understands us. You know, it's okay if their English is a little bit broken, as long as they're communicating with you, uh, getting back to you and answering the questions we have, okay? So next, we're gonna to wanna to order samples of your main competitors off Amazon. So going back to this coffee warmer, if you were gonna be doing this product, you would wanna, of course, run the numbers and uh, overall, Find the style or color that's selling the best, you know, consistently doing the most revenue. What color is it? What size is it? What features does it have? How long does it stay warm? How hot does it get? Um, and so you would want to look at your main competitors on Amazon and then order or buy a couple of your main competitors products off Amazon, get them to your house. Because the reason we want to do that is we're going to compare the quality of the products of the, that you buy off Amazon from the sellers on Amazon, we're gonna compare those products to the products or the samples you get from your suppliers. And we wanna make sure we have just as good, good quality or better from your uh, manufacturer that, that the Amazon sellers do that are making money on Amazon, okay? Does that make sense? So uh, I always recommend ordering a couple of your main competitors' products off Amazon so you can compare with how your samples look from your top two suppliers that you're thinking of going with. So you can use Alibaba or um, download the Alibaba app to your phone is very helpful. And we would just come on to Alibaba. Let's go ahead and type in coffee warmer. All right, and what is so cool about Alibaba is this is the largest supplier database in the world. So yes, there's some low quality suppliers on here who you know are not verified and are a little bit risky to do business with. But overall, in my experience, you know, suppliers that are listed on Alibaba um, are going to be pretty, pretty um, uh, good to deal with. And here's how you can uh, minimize your risk and make sure you're only looking at suppliers who offer trade assurance and are verified. Over here on the left, you can see supplier types. You will want to always choose trade assurance and verified supplier. This will make sure that you're only looking at suppliers who have trade assurance, which means insurance. So once you pay for the product, and get it shipped to Amazon. If the product never arrives, you never get the product, um, it's all damaged, you have trade assurance uh, or insurance to back it up and get your money back or a portion of your money back. And number two, verified supplier. This means Alibaba, the company, has verified that these suppliers um, are trustworthy uh, to work with. Also, up here you can see where you type in the name of the product in the search bar. You can see that there's a section here, products, wholesaler, suppliers. Sometimes I'll start with products, but then if there's a lot of uh, results for this product, um, I would go with suppliers because we only want to deal with, in most cases, suppliers who make this product or manufacturers. These are factories over in China who can produce thousands and thousands of these per month or per week even. And in most cases, we only want to deal with manufacturers or suppliers who have the equipment, the, the factory machinery to build this product from scratch. If you're looking or only looking at the results that come up under products, um, that's just everyone who can list a product on Alibaba. It could be a trading company, it could be a middleman. And so that's why I recommend looking at suppliers. And then you can check your trade assurance, verified supplier, and then now we can start to go through the results. What do I look for once I see all the results? Because there's, there's gonna be a lot. Now, if you ever look for a supplier and you type in the name of the product up here and under products or suppliers, not many results come up. Let's say there's only one or two suppliers or results that come up. That's not necessarily a bad sign. What that could mean is there's very little manufacturers for that product, number one. But number two, it's hard to buy the product, which could give you an advantage selling that product on Amazon. Um, if the product is hard to find a supplier for, in some cases, that's a very good thing 
because other people, other sellers will have a problem finding suppliers or, or uh, manufacturers. And if you're able to find one and work with one and launch the product, that gives you an advantage. So every little advantage we can get being an Amazon seller, uh, we want to take, uh, take into account and use it to our advantage. So low amount of suppliers or low amount of results for a product on Alibaba is a good thing. Um, if you reach out to, let's say there's only one manufacturer or two manufacturers on Alibaba, and they're just not willing to work with you on MOQ or price is not reasonable, um, then it could be an issue and you may have to pass on that product and go on to the next one. Now, just as uh, we're looking for products that maybe have a low amount of suppliers, we also don't wanna go into products that have too many results, like thousands of, of suppliers or products listings on Alibaba. That could signal that the product is over competitive or getting too saturated if there's tons and tons of results on Alibaba. Every product will have a trend or a life cycle. Most products will sell well for anywhere from one to two years. That's gonna be the lifespan of the product. About two years is about how, usually how long the product will sell well. And so uh, if, you, if you search for a product or find a product on Amazon, you search for it on Alibaba and there's you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds or thousands even of results, that could signal that it's getting oversaturated or the life cycle of the product is getting close to the end. Okay, next guys, what I recommend doing is going through here and seeing, are we looking at the relevant results? Are these actual, the products that we're looking for? So uh, we're looking for a smart coffee warmer. The price on Amazon is $26, which tells me I'm probably gonna be paying, let's see the other prices. So price on Amazon um, is, Right here, it's kind of mixed up, but we have $22, 22, 39, 21, 14 for these coffee uh, coffee warmers. So I, I just know from experience, this product on Alibaba should be, if it sells on Amazon for 15 to $30 on Alibaba, you should only have to pay between five and $10 for the product, okay? So let's go through here and look at the results. The first thing I look at, how long has the company been in business right here? I usually like to see at least two or three years or more. I look at their um, total revenue. How much in US dollars have they done? You know, 5 million to 10 million or more um, is advisable. Um, these little transaction levels, the diamonds, you know, two or three of these or more is great. Um, what's their response rate? Uh, we want a high response rate in the 80s or more. That tells you that they get back to the inquiries and the uh, messages uh, good. Here's a 95% um, response rate, but this is not the same product. This is a tea coffee warmer plate uh, for teapots. But uh, here, this one looks like it, winter desk, temp two temperature grade electric mug warmer. So you can see the idea here. We're looking for uh, suppliers or manufacturers who've been in business a while. Um, you can also look at the name of the company here because sometimes they'll have multiple listings and you don't want to contact the same supplier, you know, multiple times. The same supplier, could have 30 different listings on Alibaba. So make sure you are paying attention to the company name. And then you could open up, if this was a, a interesting one, they're verified, they have trade assurance, they've got three and a half diamonds, they've got a 95 almost percent response rate. Um, they've done over a hundred million dollars in uh, total revenue. This is absolutely a supplier I would consider. Um, so you click on their um, uh, listing here and we can look at their products. What products uh, do they make? So let's look at cup warmer or coffee warmer is the product we're interested in, but also pay attention to the other products they manufacture. Uh, if, the, if the company seems to have products in all different categories from pet supplies to baby, that could signal that it's not a good supplier to work with because they are selling so many different products it could signal that they're a trading company or middleman. And usually I will like to find a supplier like this who has multiple products. Uh, we know they're a manufacturer because we sorted by supplier and they have multiple products in the same niche or same market and multiple versions. This tells me that they'd be willing to grow with me if I want to expand. If this product takes off, they have other variations or models of the same product, newer versions that I could offer. Of course, uh, like this one here, you can see the price difference here. This USB cup cooler warmer is $11 to $13 per unit, whereas this one is only $2.95. Um, I would probably go with the more expensive one 
in most cases because there'd be more profit margin. As long as I can sell the product, if I buy it for 11 to $15 on Alibaba, I better be able to sell that product for $40, $50 or more on Amazon. There's the 33 or the third and third and third percent rule on Amazon. What is the 33% rule on Amazon? This means for um, one third of uh, your money that you invest or make, one third will go to cost of product uh, and manufacturing and shipping. One third will go to um, FBA fees and PPC fees. And one third will be left over for profits. Okay, so a third, a third, a third. So if you buy the product on Alibaba for 11 to 12 to $13, you better be able to sell that product if the FBA fees are around $10, you know, 15, 10 is $25. You need another third, so you better be able to sell that product for $45 or more. And that's just a rough calculation. Of course, you would want to do more um, uh, detailed profitability calculations once you reach out to these suppliers and get prices back. Then you could take those numbers and put them in here and do profitability calculations, okay? And you'll want a 30% margin or more, um, at least you know $10 profit per unit roughly, and at least 125% ROI. But that comes later after you find, you know, five to 10 suppliers and start contacting them to get quote. Hey guys, real quick, before we continue on with the video, I just wanted to thank all of you who support the channel and watch my videos here on YouTube. Uh, it's a fast growing channel and I couldn't do it without you. I have so many successful students who are making a ton of money um, with their own Amazon FBA businesses. Make sure to join the Amazon FBA Gladiators Facebook group to stay updated on all the new changes and results I'm getting for my students. If you are interested in joining a course and getting my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, check out the Amazon for All training program down below. That comes with my unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentorship and coaching. Also, uh, please take a minute if you haven't already and like the video, subscribe, leave me a comment down below. Any recommendations on other future videos of content? What would you like to see from me? I love seeing those suggestions down below. And by doing so, those three things, you're automatically entered to win a one-on-one -on -one mentorship call, a 30-minute call with me. Okay, once you reach out to five to 10 suppliers uh, with the template and they respond to you and you like their answers, then it's time to request a formal quotation um, or a PI, a purchase invoice, purchase order. This will show all the final prices, detailed breakdowns, um, the size of the product, the style of the product, what the product um, comes with. Does it include packaging? Uh, how much is it extra to put your brand or logo on the product? All of these types of things you'll want to communicate with to the supplier. We want our logo on the product. We want custom packaging. We want uh, our Amazon barcode on each unit. Uh, we want a product insert card. All of these types of things, as well as DDP shipping price. If the supplier does not offer or won't quote you DDP shipping, then we'll just have to hire a freight forwarder to handle our shipping from our supplier to the Amazon warehouse. So why are we sourcing in China? China has better prices. They have way more factories that are 100 times easier to access. They offer way smaller MOQs. Uh, versus the United States, the differences in culture when working with the Chinese. Um, always trying to save you 10 cents, it's very hard for them to comprehend that you will gladly spend $1 more for a higher quality uh, product, okay? So we always want to try to source a higher quality product. Um, ask them, do you have a higher quality version of the product? We're not always looking for the cheapest version or the cheapest option. I know that may uh, be your goal is to spend the least amount of money in the beginning to get your product going, your FBA business started, but going with the cheapest option is usually not what you wanna do. You wanna look for a supplier who has a high quality product and a fair price. Other important factors for picking a supplier. Do they have your product? Are they easy to work with? Are there any red flags? Like they want 100% um, of the balance or 100% of the money up front. They don't um, do trade assurance. They only want a bank transfer or wire transfer. Um, and then uh, gold status, we talked about that. Um, we, we went on to Alibaba. We searched five to 10 suppliers. We used the template uh, to reach out to them. Okay, when you cannot find your product on Alibaba, find suppliers that produce similar products, similar as possible, 
and use an RFQ. Request for quotation uh, is another option, an RFQ. You could submit an RFQ um, with the template, put the name of the product in there, see what you get. You should get a couple suppliers who reach out to you. Getting a lower MOQ. Um, you will never make a 5,000 unit MOQ 500. Be reasonable. If their MOQ is 1,000, sometimes they'll come down to 750 or 500, but that's why I usually will sort um, for the first product. I will sort these results for uh, minimum order quantity. Over here on the left, you can actually go in and put in minimum order quantity, 500 or less, and press OK. And then we're only looking at suppliers or manufacturers who are willing to let us only buy 500 for our first test order, okay? You can also go over on the left here and choose by category. Um, ready to ship, I usually will not check because I want a custom product with my logo on it. I don't wanna just buy a stock generic product. We always wanna try to get our logo on the product, which is pretty much required now uh, for Amazon to approve your brand. And then if you're looking at um, products that uh, require customizations, you can also choose that. Um, you can also, you know, go by supplier or region. This isn't necessarily really important, but what is important in some cases is certificates. If your um, product is like a child product or requires a, good, a GMP, a good manufacturing practice certificate, um, for, in most cases, you can go over here on the left-hand side for most products and there will actually be a section for certificates. Um, if you're not sure about certificates, you could go into your seller account or look up restricted products on Amazon and uh, check to see if your product needs any restriction or any certificates or has any restrictions. It's always good to have a supplier who's uh, more prepared or has more certificates than doesn't, just in the case that Amazon requires uh, that you provide proof of certificates. Um, use WeChat or uh, Skype or WhatsApp to develop a relationship, start communicating back and forth, have a dialogue with your suppliers. Uh, a lot of times the internet is restricted in China, and so the suppliers won't always be able to log on to Alibaba to, uh, to go back and forth with you in the messages or emails. And so WeChat or Skype is a better way to develop a relationship and to communicate and have conversation with your supplier. Okay, after receiving the sample to your home, confirm making any updates, adjustments, improvements you need improvements you need done. Uh, you will wanna order a custom sample from one or two suppliers that uh, is your product with the logo, with the customizations, with the improvements you made to make sure that they got it right. Request a payment link, an Alibaba Trade Assurance order payment link. Usually we only have to pay our supplier a 30% deposit to start production, and then the other 70% balance due after the inspection and ready for shipment to Amazon. If you're bundling different products together from separate suppliers, ensure that the secondary supplier will manufacture, package, and ship the product ahead of time to the main supplier and then the main supplier will package all of the uh, pieces or uh, products together as one set. You could also hire a freight forwarder who will go pick up each of the different parts or products from different suppliers and package them together and, and uh, ship them, uh, handle the DDP shipping for you. We also need the F and SKU Amazon barcode on the final product on each unit. You need the F and SKU, you need made in China, and if it has a plastic bag, a suffocation warning label. Okay, um, a couple red flags, like I mentioned for dealing with suppliers, is they want 100% balance paid up front. Um, if they only offer a, a wire transfer or bank transfer and they don't offer or allow you to pay with trade assurance or credit card or with PayPal, that could be a red flag. Um, if you got prices and they quoted you a certain price and then uh, a couple weeks later, they message you and raise the price, that could also be a red flag. As for pictures or video from your supplier of the manufacturing and production process, you could also ask them what is their quality control program like. Um, I recommend creating a dummy listing inside your seller central account um, about a month ahead of when you plan to launch the product, at least a month ahead from when you plan to launch the product to make sure there are no restrictions or approval needed for your product from Amazon. Um, and this is, this is a great way Amazon will tell you if there's any restrictions or certificates needed. Um, now, let's talk about using American suppliers. Can you use American suppliers? Yes, you can. I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But before I do, 
um, suppliers in other countries like India, Vietnam, um, South America. Absolutely, you could reach out to suppliers in those countries right on Alibaba. Um, it's not Alibaba is not just for Chinese suppliers. Uh, you can uh, do different regions, different countries. However, I have found that buying products from China, from Chinese manufacturers, I get the best price, the highest quality product, and most importantly, they're familiar with shipping products uh, and cartons and, sh and shipping requirements to the Amazon warehouse versus getting an Indian supplier uh, in India or Vietnam. They're not as familiar with the logistics and shipping requirements to Amazon's warehouse and getting a freight forwarder or a shipping company to handle your DDP shipping in China is much easier than trying to get it done from Europe or Vietnam. Not impossible, but definitely harder. Okay, for American suppliers, one website you can use is thomas.net. thomas.net is a supplier database that has um, suppliers in the United States. So you could come onto thomas.net. We could go ahead and, and search for the product. Let's see if they have what we're looking for, which is coffee warmer for desk. Um, what I have found about uh, American suppliers a lot of the times their MOQ is very high and their price, usually they cannot beat the price of Chinese manufacturers, but you are welcome to look for American suppliers if it makes sense for your product or you're trying to create a brand that's all American made and you're willing to pay a little bit more. You can absolutely look on um, a thomas.net or you can go onto Google and type in the name of your product and uh, look to see what the results are and contact manufacturers. Okay, let's talk about trading companies for a minute. Trading companies are companies on Alibaba that uh, buy the product from manufacturers and then resell it to you. So usually I like to avoid trading companies just because they are middlemen, they take a cut. I also regularly don't use sourcing agents. Sourcing agents are somebody you could hire on Upwork or Fiverr that would go out and find you a manufacturer or supplier. The only downside to using a, or a trading company or a sourcing agent to find manufacturers is they uh, are middlemen and they take a cut. And so same thing with sourcing agents. Uh, they have a commission in there and will get paid one way or the other. Even if they only charge you $50 up front, they are taking a commission. So sourcing agents, um, just make sure that they don't charge a ton. Now, let's pull up a couple of these listings here on Alibaba, and how do you know if the company is a trading company or a manufacturer? Over here on the right-hand side, sometimes you can tell by their name. So Shenzhen Moshine Technology Co. If it's a company, in most cases, or it says manufacturing um, or supplier, usually, or company, it's usually a um, manufacturer. Other times, uh, you have to look at the listing itself under the company name, it will say manufacturer or trading company um, under the name. In some cases, it'll say manufacturer comma trading company. Other times it'll just say trading company. The downside to working with the trading company is they can't get a low MOQ. They can't do much, much customizations. They're a middleman that work directly with the factory and then resell or flip the products to you. And then factories and manufacturers have the ability to customize and offer the MOQ that we want, and they usually have a better price. A couple more tips here for knowing, are you dealing with a trading company or manufacturer? Uh, you're dealing with a trading company in most cases if samples take way too long, weeks to get your sample, mold fees are way too high, they don't seem to know about a lot about the product or customizations. If you work with a trading company, make sure to get an inspection, and in some cases, trading companies can be okay to work with. Uh, they, they do usually have to buy in batches. So they would buy like a thousand units. They would buy like 200 for you. They would sell 300 to someone else and they'd sell 500 units to another buyer. So how do we pay your supplier? I mentioned this a little earlier, but the best thing to do is to request a payment link and pay your supplier using an Alibaba Trade Assurance order payment link with your credit card. Alibaba Trade Assurance protection built in, in case your supplier never ships your product, your products get lost at sea or never arrive to the Amazon warehouse, and you paid for DDP shipping, you're entitled to a refund. 
So double checking everything you have requested is clearly labeled and detailed on your quotations. You wanna pay attention to those purchase orders or invoices you get from your suppliers that all details and agreements and upgrades and branding and packaging options and insert cards are all clearly labeled on your purchase order. We want to make sure that's all on there. And the shipping terms, uh, EXW means zero shipping included. FOB, that means half of the shipping is included to a Chinese seaport. DDP uh, by C is what we really want. That will get your product from the factory in China all the way to the Amazon warehouse. And then tariffs. If you pay your supplier or freight forwarder for DDP shipping, tariffs, duties, taxes, and all other shipping costs is all included in that DDP shipping cost. So just double check and make sure you are paying attention to your purchase orders and invoices that it in fact includes DDP shipping, door-to-door -door shipping with all customs, duties, tariffs, taxes, and fees included, which it should if you're using DDP shipping. All right, guys, there you have it. A breakdown and walkthrough of suppliers, how to find the best suppliers, how to know if you're dealing with a manufacturer or trading company. Should you go with a supplier in China or India or Vietnam or even in the USA? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you could make sure you're subscribed, like the video, comment down below, and I choose two lucky winners every single video to do one-on-one -on -one mentorship giveaway calls. You could be one of those lucky winners. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've been trying to... What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel.